Welcome to another episode of the Study Permit Black Box, as we like to call it, where we look at different cases with the assistant of our uh, immigration consultant, immigration expert, Pavel here, to figure out what happened. As we've explained before, the little hole into the black box is Cape's notes. If you don't know what they are, go back and look at the previous episode. You'll find out what Cape, Cape's notes are. But Sohail, would you like to get us started and tell us sure, a little bit about this Sure, just like case. the way that we're always doing it, it's case study. So we're just kind of right. like pulling one out and we're just we're looking just at the over. notes and then we're asking Pavel what went wrong and how we can fix it. This particular applicant um, came to Canada as a visitor and he or she wanted to change uh, the status as a student. And the officer's note says, intent to study in Canada not disclosed at the time of visa application or admission to Canada. This has diminished overall credibility of submission. State's proposed program is a continuation of her business studies, but did not provide proof of previous studies. Vague study plan slash reasonable explanation of realistic potential benefit at the level that will offset significant investment, not to comparable programs in home or country of region. Uncle will pay for the study, no personal funds, Weak ties to home country, we hear it a lot. Uh, not satisfied primary purpose is to study and will leave by the end of the authorized study period. As a result, rejection. Okay, Pavel, can you decipher this for us, please? Sure, yeah. So, I know this case. Uh, this case is a person who came here as a visitor, right? He was invited by his, uh, by her relatives here in Canada and yeah, she decided to apply for study permit. So the main line here in this case note is this one, intent to study in Canada not disclosed at time of visa application or admission to Canada. So basically what officer wants to tell that uh, when this person uh, uh, was entering Canada and she was asked uh, what, is your, what is your reason of coming to Canada, she told uh, like visiting, right? Mm -hmm. And in general, yeah, it's, 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 it, it's, it, it, it is a reason she came to Canada, right? But at the same time, she applied in a few days after she came, and probably in her case, the uh, letter of acceptance was already ready, so she started this process well before, right? Okay. So basically, uh, looking at her case, officer knows that when she was entering Canada, she already knows that she will apply for study permit, right? So her intent was not visitor, her right. intent was studying, right? But again, it's only part of the uh, of the uh, why this uh, officer makes this decision, right? So let's read then uh, further. So um, of course, no personal fund, funds. So this person uh, only showed that there are some funds available from her uncle in Canada. Mm -hmm. Again, so. In previous episode, we uh, we di we di discussed if it's good uh, to have relatives here in Canada. It is good if they will add, add something to your funds and overall financial situation. It's also good, but at the same time, you still have to show you have something. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anything yourself, uh, you, your parents will not support you. You don't have any funds uh, saved, and the only person who will help you is your relative in Canada. This is not good, right? Again, mm -hmm. that shows that your connections, present connections in Canada, it kind of prevail uh, over your so your relationship in Canada yeah. is stronger than the yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, yeah, so uncle will pay for the study, right? So again, so probably this person has some parents uh, and even parents don't uh, do any input to, to her financial uh, situation, so not good, right? Uh, weak ties to home country. So again, so probably this person didn't show much ties again what ties might be from her side again so uh, probably some employment prospects it's very good even if you don't have much funds available shows that you have some prospects in your home country so for example if you uh, have some employment take a letter from employer showing that uh, he promised you that after this study in Canada maybe you'll be promoted right mm -hmm. or this course that you're going to take in Canada it will help you to Mm, to to grow professionally mm -hmm. in your profession uh, and so basically something that shows that this course of study in Canada will help you uh, when you return back after after the study right 
Uh, and so they they make this conclusion: uh, not satisfied primary purpose, uh, not satisfied primary purpose is to study and will leave by the end of an authorized stay period. Again, so because this person doesn't show any funds, so probably officer makes conclusions that uh, she will seek for the uh, um, work in Canada rather than to study. Right. So yeah. So. So, so how would you fix it if you wanted to reapply? So let me just, so in summary, just to make sure I understand it before we go to that question. So first of all, the officer is saying you're lying to me. You, you knew you wanted to come here and study, but you said I'm going to come here and visit. Because it sounded like you, you said this person probably had their letter of acceptance from some college, some institution in their hand. Yes. Before applying to come as a visitor, right? Yeah, so we're talking about intent, yeah, so right. she so, didn't disclose this intent. Yeah, right? which is lack of transparency again, like we were talking about. And then the other element is financially, she, she can't support herself, she's relying on relatives that are already in Canada, which is leads to the third thing that your ties to Canada are stronger than your ties in whatever country she's coming from, yeah. which, okay, so that kind of sums it up. And now Soil wants to know. I want to know, like, if you were going to reapply for her, what what could you add to it to make it a stronger application? I would walk again. So the general idea, I would walk on ties, right? What ties it could be in this situation? First of all, I would probably show some uh, funds, some money from her country and from her parents, right? So I would uh, show some savings, some bank statements from from her own account, even. Uh, if she doesn't have anything, so maybe she should walk, uh, take some time and walk on her uh, on her bank account, so to uh, to I don't know to to, to add some the money circulation to of the money in the account. Yeah. Like, you know. usually it's a good idea to ask for a bank statement. It's not a very good idea to take some money, put it on your bank account, and say that hey, I have this money. No, because the officer wants to see that this money there for some time. Usually we advise clients to show bank statement for the last four months. Okay. This is enough to show that uh, you really it's it's really money that came from your sources, so uh, you have it, right? Another thing, if, if for example, this is not the option, so I would uh, ask this client to show uh, maybe bank statement or show the employment situation of her parents. So basically, I would rather make her parents uh, the main sponsor, the people who will pay for her study, rather than her uncle in Canada. Right. right? Again, so this will show her connections to home country. Right. Uh, if she, I don't know much about the case, right, from this one, but if, for example, she had employment, if she if she worked on the time of application, so again, so I would uh, I would make this case stronger by showing some employment letters. Um, Maybe if she has some again, we don't know much, but if she, for example, is married, so I would uh, I would provide all the paperwork showing that she is married, that she has. So yes. intent that she's going to go back. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's one a, a question that comes to my mind, and this is going to be across the case with everything, right? Is if I'm the immigration officer and I've already seen this, the notes are in the system. Now a new application comes. Mm -hmm. Aren't they going to think, well, you know, you, you applied and this is the stuff you showed us. Now you're putting a new application in front of me showing like, you know, three months of money in the account, four months of money. I mean, aren't they going to think like, what are you trying to do? Manipulate me here? What's the... Actually, no. Again, so what I do in my cases, basically uh, when immigration consultant applies, so he has this additional document that he can provide, it's called submission letter, right? Mm -hmm. I start submission letter like this. So uh, we reapply for this case. Capes notes were ordered by me. Mm -hmm. I received them. And let me please address each concern that I found mm -hmm. in these Capes notes. And I just and I, and I go line by line. So first concern, this. So let me address this. So I bring additional evidence, right? I I walk on the previous documents that were and show them again. So I. Uh, show I do some stress on what the, I want the visa officer to see, right? So basically, I address each line, and this actually works. Yeah. That's another reason that you should use an immigration yeah. consultant rather than doing it yourself. All right, gentlemen, I think we've wrapping it up. Wrap up this episode. Hopefully, you learned something. 
don't lie to the immigration officer. Make sure you show intent that you're going to go back to your country. We'll see you again in the next episode.